Hello and welcome to Ecoholics. In this video, we will discuss about answer writing in Indian Economic Service Examination. Now, when I when I ask my students like, what is the most important thing to do to clear this examination? This is a reading, conceptual clarity, revision. They say almost everything except for answer writing on priority. Now here in this video, I will tell you that if I have to run 100 meter race in next 2028 Olympics, what exactly I need to do today or what exactly I need to do maximum amount of time is simple as running. So here, when exactly you need to write in the examination by presenting your thoughts on pen and paper, the most amount of time you should invest of your studies is in answer writing and that is where people make mistakes and they do not clear the examination at the end of the day. This is the biggest roadblock in the mind of the students as well because they think that after completion or after completing the syllabus I will start writing or right now what can I write if I don't know anything. Now this examination requires post graduation in economics. If you have done post graduation of economics or you are doing post graduation of economics, I'm sure that at least 5% of the topic in the syllabus mentioned, you can write something. And that's the starting point. People think that Abhi right now I'm studying. I will write one day. So what I say from making one day to make it day one of your answer writing so that you do not make the mistake which other 90% people are making by not writing it. I know first answer even if you evaluate after writing 10 answers you will also reject your answer but at least it's a first attempt to write the answer and you have that courage to start writing along with your preparation. One thing which is very very vital here that answer writing is the part of your preparation. And for that, every Sunday I do a three hours workshop of Indian Economic Services, which is absolutely free. The link is given in the description. You can register it and you can come to that workshop where I'll tell each and everything about answer writing. Now here we'll come to the topic number one, that when we talk about answer writing, it looks like a very simple, it's like question, and then we are writing answer. If I talk about majorly 100 words, 200 words and 300 words you have to write. Now when you have to write 300 words at max, why to read 3000 words? That's my question to each and every student. Because if you see inflation is a smallest topic if you find in the syllabus or maybe planning is not a very small topic but there are very small section in general economics 3. Here you need to understand that if you are writing 300 words only, why to read 3000? Read at least 600, 900 maximum. But in order to read 3000, you have the opportunity cost of not reading other or not revising or not writing answer. Simply so what I say that UPSC is asking 100, 200, 300 words. So first of all, make sure that you have limited resources to refer, okay? This is the first thing to start writing answers, limited resources. Suppose for example, today you are reading a topic named as indifference curve. Read that only, make notes of that and write one question on indifference curve. Topic is done and dusted, that's it. Nothing extra you have to do. It's not rocket science that you have to do a lot of things. It's, like, it's just like information you have present on the paper, revise it. That's it, very simple. So here you need to understand first is limited, then second is opportunity cost. Generally people make mistake. What mistake? Same topic reading from one book, same another book, third book, fourth book. This is the mistake people do in Indian economy and this is a mistake people do in microeconomics because these are the two subjects where you find multiple books with almost similar content. So what I say that suppose in book number one, you find five parameters or maybe properties of indifference curve. In another book, you'll find six. Then read that sixth one. Don't read the five again because those five you have already read and it is already in your notes. Don't read again. So these are like, this is how you have to refer. So one topic, one source, okay? So one topic, one source. Now, if it is linked with opportunity cost, if I'm reading this book, I'm leaving the opportunity of reading another book. 
or maybe I am reading these two books, I am leaving the opportunity of not writing the answer. Or maybe I am doing all these three, but not revising properly. So this is how the approach of answer writing should be there. Now in answer writing, number one things are like basics. Basics, like first of all, you are writing the examination which requires you to become an economist. Now, when we become economist, we think about from economics perspective, how it is possible. Economics talk with facts, figures, data. They talk with proper evidences, arguments. So if I say inflation is rising in the country, this will not fetch you marks. If you have to say inflation was this and now is this, inflation is rising. This is what an economist think. This is what they write. So in basics of answer writing, what I actually teach to my classroom students is that you need to write an answer like an economist. If you write general answers, you'll not get marks. And under it, based on what they are missing is they fail to understand demand of the question. Demand of the question. It means it's not like a semester exam, it's UPSC. In semester examination, you write whatever you know. But here, you need to write whatever UPSC is asking. So if UPSC are asking something else and you're writing something else, so obviously you'll not get marks. It's like simply, they're asking salient features and you're writing maybe merits, demerits, maybe you're discussing, maybe you're not coming directly to the point, that creates a problem. So demand of the question you need to understand. Under demand of the question, two things are very important to understand, which is content and context. Content and context. Now, what does it mean? Content means what exactly that particular topic will cover. For example, India adopted economic reforms in 1991. What's the content? Like LPG reform, liberalization, privatization, globalization. Then what exactly happened? We have relaxed so many trade rules. We have implemented reforms on monetary sector, foreign trade sector, internal sector, etc. Et That's content. What is context? Context was crisis. At that time, economic crisis, we had left with very few options. I'll give you a small example. This is a water bottle. The water inside it is content. But this bottle, which holds the shape of the water is known as context. So it means whatever you are telling in the answer, writing in the answer is the context. But context is in that particular period, what exactly happened? Like nowadays people easily criticize our first prime minister. Jawaharlal Nehru should do this, should do that, should have done that, or they have did this particular thing wrong. But if you see that in 2024, 25, we can criticize that. But imagine the situation at that particular time. In 2050, you can criticize the COVID implemented policy, how to counter COVID. But in 2020, it was very difficult to take decision when to open the economy, when to put the lockdown, etc., etc. So here, content and Context, both are important. So in basics of answer writing, what is important? People generally are confused, like whether to write in bullet points, whether to write in paragraph. I would say, doesn't matter. If the question is asking, discuss, how can you write in bullet points? If a question is saying, write salient features, critically analyze, or write merits, demerits, then you can write in bullet points. And you can write mix of that as well. Three line introduction, then five bullet points. It will give you more chance to deliver more content in your copy than in terms of paragraph. So again, it depends. It depends on the question. Imagine demand of the question. Now we'll come to introduction. Now we have three things, introduction, body and conclusion. Introduction, body, conclusion. 
आई ऑलवेज से टू माई स्टूडेंट्स दैट इंट्रोडक्शन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज लाइक यू आर रीडिंग अ न्यूज पेपर आर्टिकल एंड इफ यू सी दैट आर्टिकल इज इंटरेस्टिंग और नॉट बाय रीडिंग लाइक फर्स्ट फ्यू लाइन्स Imagine you are the examiner, and the person writing editorial section in the newspaper is an aspirant. And while reading, you you think that a language is decent, content is good, or some kind of a curiosity that introduction is generating. So what I'm saying that we are not writing a story that we should write like that, but we are writing UPSC answer. So demand of the question must be fulfilled in introduction. People think that in introduction. shall we repeat the same content written in the question the answer is no introduction must be indicative in nature what indicative it means it, it should give an indication to the examiner that you understood the question okay let's take up one example if i say manrega was successful in rural areas or manrega has been successful in rural areas in curbing the rural unemployment Full stop. Will the similar scheme like Manrega, implemented in urban areas, have the same effect? Full stop. Discuss. Now suppose this is a question. Now this question is giving you the context of Manrega successful in rural areas. But you don't have to put more focus on Manrega and rural areas. Here the question is all about curbing the urban unemployment. So first thing in the introduction, you don't have to write yes, yes, Manrega was successful. You don't have to write yes, can be can Manrega be implemented in urban areas and it can be successful? No, possibility we don't have to write. You can write that although Manrega was successful, because the rural unemployment is homogeneous in nature, सब एक ही तरह से unemployed रहते हैं. But in urban areas, a person pulling rickshaw is employed. but a person with a phd degree can be unemployed so the same scheme can not work so introduction can be like that manrega was successful in rural areas but there may be several challenges in urban areas implementing in urban area because the nature of unemployment in urban areas is heterogeneous now by writing this line examiner will get an idea that you understood the question so see how this is we have to write introduction i feel that you should use almost 10 to 15% of your allotted word limit on introduction then we talk about body body is about keywords basics i told you content context there are 15 16 basics total i told you few important ones under body keywords keywords are very important and evidences if you are saying something back with data if you are saying something back with government policy you say that india is a growing economy india is a hub of manufacturing india is a service based economy right schemes make in india right startup scheme stand up scheme evidences without evidences body and put together you need to support now in support you need facts you need data to support that like i told you the example that inflation is rising in india how and then we have conclusion so conclusion must be approximately 20 to 25% of the word limit and rest of it is body so here you can say under conclusion generally people think that conclusion is a summary no conclusion is a not a summary conclusion is a verdict you have reached somewhere after writing intro and body in the question suppose the same question we have taken manrega in the conclusion we can write yes that can be implementable maybe in a phased manner that's conclusion the same manrega scheme to the urban areas we can implement but with certain modification that's conclusion you can say manrega cannot be implemented we need a fresh scheme that's a conclusion so some kind of a verdict decision and always remember your writing answer for indian economic service the word indian is there so your optimism your patriotism must reflect in conclusion because after reading the conclusion you will be allotted the most important thing that's why you are working hard which are marks
So if your conclusion is not good, it's not optimistic, it's like passive, not leading anywhere, you will lose marks here. So I hope you enjoyed the whole session, how to exactly structure the answer writing. In my live classes, in my Indian economic service batch, I take these session for 10 hours answer writing. So if you're interested in joining our batch, you can click on the link given in the description. That is for batch. But if you're interested in a free workshop, the Google form link is given in the description. That is absolutely free. Every Sunday, three hours decoding Indian economic service. Don't forget to subscribe to get more videos like this. Thank you and have a nice day.